I'm working on. Check, Check this out. out. Check this out, man. I will. Look, ready? Coming up for you today on the zone, we have expressive hand movements. That's right. The art of Tai Chi. Or macrame. That's with paper. Anyway. Hey, people. That time again. Zone time. I'm going to take you to a place you've never been before. It's a dream. We're three minutes away from home. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. 31 seconds. And we're still looking very good. If games are so unpopular with our parents, then somebody explain to me why over 25% of the calls to major hotlines come from people over 35. Sus or what? On one hand, they tell us we're spending too much time playing games, and then as soon as you turn your back, they're whacking away at your fave game. It's just not on. They either come out of the closet and shout, games are good, thereby earning the right to share the console, or they stick to their familiar games are bad for you gripe and keep their cotton picking hands off your carts. I'm Adam Hinch. And I'm only just starting. So, 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 so. Okay, coming at you today on The Zone, we've got games with balls, games with spots, and games that shoot, swoop, and hover. Then at no extra cost, we're throwing games that go fast, games that go boom, and games from the past. We announce the winner of the mind-bending Play Fighter comp, catch up with the new kids on the block at Gangstar, and turn feral on some seriously bad games. All that plus last week's missing segments, a play guide for that blading fashion on Skitchen, we announce how you can win heaps of gaming goodies, and of course there's heaps of cool and groovy words like... Dig it. Truly awesome. Excellent news. Totally girls thing. Today on the longest running video gaming show in Australian television history. So we've had lots of signal now. And now for something completely different. Pinball on the Mega Drive. Okay, so it's not a new concept, but from all reports, this is one of the best. Still in the midst of his misspent youth, the original pinball whiz, Muttley. I tell you what, this game's got balls. This effort from the boys and girls at Electronic Arts had me and the guys at my house up all night fighting it out in one of the hottest pinball challenges Australia's ever seen. It plays better than a real penny machine, many different boards to choose from. And if you don't like the boards there are, then just make one of your own. Or if you like one of the boards that are already made, but thinks it needs a few adjustments, then go right ahead and change it. Why not? It's your game, right? There's heaps of options, like for example, the up to four player mode, which makes this a triumph for all pinball freaks such as myself, and a must for all that play the father of all video games. As far as the competition at my house, well, I was triumphant, pulling out a huge effort of clocking one board and being nine million away from clocking a second. That totally shattered and disappointed my mates and fierce opponents, Snoop and Twisty. But as they say, fellas, there's only one winner, and that's me. Losers. This ranks big time with a 90. If your 8-bit went up in flames, leaving you with loads of games, but nothing to play them on, here's the answer. This is the TriStar, a nifty little contraption that allows you to play your 8-bit games on your Super Nintendo. You simply plug it in, fire up, and before you can say obsolete, your fave 8-bit games are back where they belong. This time we've got the word interactive. This word is mainly applied to CD games because a lot of CD games run in the format of a movie of which you control the outcome, like Tomcat Alley or Dracula Unleashed. These games are interactive. A mental atmosphere. So. Remember way back on the first show when we reviewed virtual racing? Well, here's another racing game for you, but this time it's for all the Super Nintendo heads out there. Now, Nigel Mansell's might have been out for eons, but if you think that makes it easy pickings, you're going to get your butt kicked. At the controls, flying solo for the first time, the latest addition to the zone crew, Timbo Boyle. Check this out. You're behind the wheel of a very, very fast car, and no cops. Speed is the name of this game. There's 16 different tracks from around the world to choose from. The game allows you to select all the settings of the car for different climatic conditions, different tracks, and of course, to complement your own driving ability. For example, change your tyres from hard to soft, 
to wet weather grip. Select manual or automatic transmission. You can even change the trim of the car to suit the individual circuit. The graphics are hot, putting you right amongst the action. It has heaps of options to choose from, like entering your name or even getting advice from the legend himself. Although it has its downsides like no crashing and the sound lacks grunt, all in all, it's one of the better racing games. I'll give it an 82. Here's some zonial speech for you. I like it, I like it. I told you. Back in a flash with Jungle Strike, Mario All-Stars and a Blade by Blade Guide to Skitchen. Coming at you in living Technicolor, this is The Zone. Mario, with a little bit of help from his friends, is responsible for turning millions of people onto the joys of gaming. While he might be getting a little frayed around the edges, his unique brand of platform heroics has made his all-stars cart a number one seller all around the world. I prefer more high-tech platform games, but if you're a Mario fan and haven't got this, you'd better check it out. Four classic Nintendo games have been beefed up in the looks and sound department and packed into one cart. The characters and backgrounds are more detailed in the newer game of this collection. Plus, Mario gets cooler power-ups, like a raccoon tail he can use to swipe at enemies or hover in the air. There's also a bonus battle game that sets you against your own brother, Luigi. I found Mario and Company's response a bit dodgy in places through all of them. Still, it's quite addictive, and with so many worlds to explore, you'll be playing this for several lifetimes. A great package for the Mario fetishist. I'd give it an 88. Get an eyeful of this weapon. Called the Battle Station 2, it's designed to make head-to-head -head battles with your best bud more fun than, well, more fun than before. Compatible with just about every system ever made, the Battle Station 2 features two joysticks, six-button control, and turbo switch. It's a good idea, but because of its size, it's like trying to play Twister with a porker point. That is, it's too small. So unless you're playing with the midget, and some of my best mates are midgets, or playing with a very, and I stress the word very, good friend, bide your time until a bigger model hits the shelves. He surfs, he swings, he wears shades. He's seriously cool. He's a cool spot. I don't know, guys, but it sounds to me like this overhyped 7-Up lemonade bubble is full of hot air. At the beach, and on the case, Bev. Now, here's a character that everyone can relate to. Cool spot is one definitely cool dude. His on-screen antics are totally hilarious, as he flips, slips, zips his way around collecting what else but spots, and trying to free all his friends from their prison cells. And guys, he surfs on the 7-Up bottle as well. Follow this cool spot across heaps of air-torn zones, from toylands to beaches. This boy knows how to throw a party, with mad array of enemies to fight along the way, as well as some twisting mazes to solve. This game is surely one of the funniest and enjoyable platform games around, and this lovable character is one everyone will want to play. A totally real 88. All you need is the knowledge. First up, Jurassic Park on the Mega Drive. Suspect graphics, horrible sound, and gameplay is worse than prehistoric. And if you think that was bad, Home Alone was cool in the movies, but as a game, it stinks. Sure, it's old, but it's the sort of game that your folks might buy you for a prezi. And we tell them, leave it alone. Play, genius, play, and play good. I'm sure Alien 3, The Gun, got its name not just from the movie, but also from people giving it a rating from 1 to 10. No skill apart from fast reflexes is needed. You have an unlimited supply of bullets to shoot lots and lots of aliens, and that's it. There are six levels of the same thing to get through, and it gets repetitive pretty quickly. There aren't even many special items to pick up along the way, like a flamethrower or added light. Graphics, though, are fantastic. The reproduction of the creatures is perfect. The sound's impressive, too, with well-placed streams and realistic gunfire. The ending, however, is not spectacular at all. Back to the drawing board, guys. Alien 3, the gun, is a big letdown. Amazing phenomenon. For all those RPG hotheads out there, here's one for you. Mm. Not as easy as it sounds. So, 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 so. Hi, Janice here. I've been sussing out all the letters that have been arriving at Zoneland. And what it adds up to is that you want more play guides and cheats. So we're going to give them to you. Starting next week, all the tips, hints and cheats that you can handle. What? Not good enough? Okay, let me try that one again. So, what it adds up to is that you want more play guides and more cheats. So we're going to give them to you, starting right now. 
Right, if you've seen the review the other week, chances are you've got the skitching cut jammed in your home console. Now this radical form of blade running doesn't come naturally to most people, so I've got some guidelines to skate with. A big points bonus is pulling off some gnarly aerials, that's skater talk for jumping ramps. So the thing to do is get maximum height off the ramp, then press the directional pad in relation to what manoeuvres you'd like to squeal through. Up's normally the best starting direction, then from there go right, left, down, whatever. But the thing to remember is to totally let go of everything just when you start coming down, and you'll land feet first instead of head to the gravel. Now beating people is pretty easy to get a grip on, and of course weapons that you score off the road definitely come in handy. But the true thing to strike for is build position. You can do as many jumps and thumps as you want, but if you come in last, it all counts for nicks. And the key to winning is, of course, practice. It's important to be able to get the faster moving car, which is usually one of the first ones that come past you. So you'll find that your A button is the most instrumental in putting you in first place. And being able to get from car to car with the aid of your B button, especially when coming back from the blowout, is also an essential skill. So in short, get into the top three, and once there, be as fancy as you want without biting the sidewalk. Okey dokes, we announce the lucky son or daughter of a game head who came up trumps in the clay fighter comp. We visit GameStar with the lovable rogue the Mutt, and check out Jungle Strike, Super Bomberman, Popeye the Pinball Machine, and Ravenlop on the PC. And next week, on edition 7 of The Zone, we'll pull on the PJs and buckle up the black belt for a fighting extravaganza. That's destined to be... well, not bad anyway. So don't touch a thing, we won't. You're plugged into The Zone. Here we are away from Zone Land and at NMS Mag today to draw this monstrously huge competition from the combined efforts of Ocean, Interplay, Air New Zealand, the Zone of course, NMS Metro Games. There you go. So, here we have Mary, editor of NMS Mag. That's me. <laughs> How are you, Mary? <laughs> Not too bad. And uh, she's going to help us draw out the competition today. We thought who better. Uh, shall we go for it? Why not? Okay. Drum roll. Uh, and the winner is... Stephen Miles of Crib Point. Woo! No! Dan Amasco. Well, Stephen, you are one lucky man. But take card losers, because you might not be losers. In fact, you might be winners. We've got four games from Metro Games for your Super Nintendo and four programmable six-button joypads to give away. Your names will be coming up in just a sec. Well, that's it for the Clay Fighter Comp, but we are going to have a competition from now on every week for giveaways and stuff, and the details of it go a little something like this. Thanks, Handman. I mean, Adam. Later on in the show, that nimble old ninja Amos is going to review his fave game, and all you have to do to win a whole heap of gaming goodies is to write down the name of that game, the system that you use, your name and address, and send it first thing on Monday to my fave game, The Zone, P.O. Box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales, 2068. That is, my fave game, The Zone, P.O. Box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales, 2068. And you could be one of five lucky game heads to win. Just another reason to hook on to... Well, what's a morning at The Zone without the blood-pumping excitement of a full-blown combat game? I shudder to think about it. So what are we waiting for? Let's go to war. Here's a cool game you can get your teeth into, and you might even save some cash too. Because it's not a new game, it's an old electronic arts release called Jungle Strike. It's a sequel to a game called Desert Strike, which as the name indicates, was one of the brilliant yet totally pathetic marketing ploys to cash in on the media ratings of the Gulf War. However, the game Desert Strike was so cool I nearly froze, and its predecessor Jungle Strike simply cooks, which prompts me to say, who gives a rich nanny goat fighting horn what they called it or how they marketed it? The object of Jungle Strike is that you, the wisecracking American hero type character, must save the world from the evil and somewhat dirty smelling ideas of the very bad and naughty drug lord and madman. All the game aspects such as scrolling, graphics and sound are first rate on the Mega Drive. But the gameplay is most righteous. It's not a flight sim, it's just a very well made target, shoot and destroy. There are nine levels, with up to eight or nine different missions in each level. It's cool, and it sits at 85. 
You know, it takes a lot to get zone review regular Amos Wong extra excited. This classic game does. Its name, Super Bomberman. If you haven't got Super Bomberman yet, I suggest you do so immediately. A fantastic four-player battle mode where you have to blow up all your friends is too much fun to describe. It doesn't need over-the-top graphics for brilliant playability. Twelve different mazes to choose from to give you lot at each other for eons. My fave maze is the Power Zone, where each Bomberman can drop up to six bombs, each with a huge blast radius. With four players, you'd better keep your eyes peeled and think quick. The normal two-player game is also very addictive and challenging, with really groovy bosses and nasties for you to bomb your way through. The music gets you highly vibed and the explosions really go off. For a maximum bomb-fest experience though, the four-player multi-tap is essential. This classic game deserves a 95. All you need is the knowledge. It's a dog. It blows, but it's getting there. Game needs work. Can't get any better. It just got better. Reaching out into other worlds. Here's a word for you. Simulation. Or sim for short. And no, Bev, that wasn't a height joke. Simulation games are titles like F-19, Attack Chopper, and SimCity 2000. There's a shock. <laughs> These games attempt to be as lifelike as possible. Therefore, simulating real life. Pretty damn impressive, huh? Time now for our regular dose of news madness with all the buzz, Muttley. How you doing? It's Muttley with the buzz. That's right. He's back. He's bad. He's ugly. And he's even more stupid than I am. Of course, I'm talking about the Hulk. We've got some cool pictures of him happening and it'll be out later on this year. But the real news is there's a competition at the moment run by Blockbuster Video and it's to find Australia's premier game player. When they find him, they're going to ship him off to Fort Lauderdale in America for a weekend long gaming type world championship that's right it's huge but the competition's only being held in melbourne that means to find australia's best he's got to be under 20 and living in melbourne and that's a bit hard unless you've got the cash to get down there you can't be australia's best you might have seen the old virtual reality machine well now there's a new one being shipped over from england as we speak now we here at the zone get to go and play it next week and the week after that you'll see some pictures of it on the zone but the good news is you Get to go and play it when we give you the chance to with free coupons that we'll be giving out to our viewers if you're lucky enough. Comics are also hot news at the moment. There's a few game titles being released as comics and we'll be previewing them next week on The Zone. That's a really cool thing. One of those titles is Street Fighter 2 and currently on the Gold Coast, which is that way, the movie of Street Fighter 2 has been started and is starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, Jean-Claude Van Damme, that's his wife who's serving the oranges, and wait for it, Kylie Minogue! Swing! I should be so lucky. And for Sydney viewers, next Friday 10th of June, Adam and I, that's me and Adam, will be down at the Home Computer Show at Darling Harbour. That's right, we'll be in the Village Roadshow stand having a chat, checking out the latest games, and you could win a Dell Multimedia System. That's right, worth $4,000. All you have to do is fill in the entry forms and pop them in the box, Adam's got whatever comes in handy. And... We'll be drawing the winner of that competition right here on the show, June the 18th. Watching. Now, if anyone's forgot about the Mortal Kombat 0055 hints and tips line, you should be shot. It's 0055-26190. And there's a new one opening up. It's an NBA Jam hotline. All the tips you want to know on the SNES, the Mega Drive, and the two arcade versions. The number for that is 0055-219-3685. Want to hear it again? 00-55-219-3685 And since we're treating our Sydney viewers, we've got something special for them as well. If you're in here on Monday morning and ask for Tim Boyle, he's got a hundred tickets to the home computer show that me and Adam are going to. So ring him up and ask for one. The number's 417-3300. And his name is Tim Boyle. Man, he's going to shoot me for that. <laughs> Gotta go, but I'm Muttley. You're not of very strange arcade titles over the years and this one is right up there with the best of them. For a lot of you, your only memory of Popeye would be a really bad film with Robin Williams but the Sailor Man has been around since the 1920s and now he has his own pinball. The design is a double play field with a mixture of ramps, poles and even an escalator. It's too much though as half the time you can't see the ball or where you want to shoot. The quotes and graphics are good if you're old enough to remember them. The big news is, though, Popeye is now environmentally aware. 
You score big points by helping them to do things like protecting endangered species, saving our forests and even cleaning up oil spills. Popeye is now so politically correct it's a wonder the machine itself isn't solar powered. Overall, not a bad game to have a bash at, but there are better already out there. Last week we met the people behind the words that are hyper. Today, it's the all-girl team at GameStar Mag who go under the microscope. How you doing, Gameheads? It's Motley here again. We're here to check out some serious babyage. Swing, 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 swing. <laughs> Just joking. We're actually here to check out, edit, GameStar. It's a serious name in gaming. Let's go. Come on. See this? This is the GameStar backstage pass. You need one of these before you enter this room. Two's on privilege. So making a games magazine, people might think, oh yeah, play games, write reviews. It's a lot tougher than that. How tough have you found it? It's really tough. <laughs> um, producing a magazine is more than just playing the games that are in it. And um, certainly the team that we've got come from backgrounds in graphics and um, design and business management and that sort of thing. So we've got a really nice team of people supporting us on that front. And also we've got lots of reviewers and cheats people and stuff who are able to produce us the most current and up-to-date stuff before everybody else. Gaming is meant to be a bloke's field. I don't think so personally, but how do you find it? There's no reason why girls can't kick butt in games just as much as guys can. Correct. And um, are you we're having... It hard? Yes, no. Funny, hard, what? No, no what, way. What? Do you don't cop any flack from the fellas or anything? I, girls always cop flack from guys if they want to do anything that guys like to think they're best at, so... But no, we don't cop any more than we're used to. Sorry I asked. Congrats to the winners of the Clay Fighter Cup. We'll see the...